Hey there, I'm Julie, Fay Fan Balzer. I'm a painter, a printmaker, and a collage artist living and working outside of Boston. And welcome to my studio. So this week I've been playing with packaging. It's one of my favorite things to do mono printing on the gelatin plate with. This is um, a box that chocolates came in. You can see it's covered with paint now because these corrugated lines are perfect for making some really beautiful paper. So. Come on, let's check out some of the papers that I made. So I began simply by rolling acrylic paint out onto my plate and then I started sort of printing and smushing my box and I actually decided partway through that I probably had too much paint because I'm not getting much definition. So I printed on top of a piece of paper that had some blue printing on it before and mm, the results are kind of mushy. Now I don't let any failure kind of get me down. I think about what I wanted it to be versus what it was and how I can get there. This is just a little bit of cleanup. I like this better. It has more white Space, so that's a clue to me that I need to find a way to remove more paint and have there be more white space. So this time I'm using some fluid acrylics and I'm sort of uh, removing from the left half and adding to the right half. It's almost like removing and stamping or something like that. And I can see that the fluid acrylics are a little bit better, but I didn't use a thick enough a coat of fluid acrylics, so the stamping part is pretty naked. So again, it's always a trial, right? Here I'm just cleaning the plate. Um, putting out a very thin coat and then removing the paint that has dried on the plate and this is kind of fun too lots of great texture some of these sort of big white gaps that are interesting so now I put out a lot more fluid acrylic and I'm trying the same thing you know I fail a lot and it means I try a lot of things everything doesn't always work and that's okay in fact I think you learn a lot more from a mistake than you do from a success but here the stamping has worked much better because I added much more paint also I'm getting a little bit of paint off of the wet chocolate box because there's some paint on there that um, you know is a color that I didn't even put out this side also looks good it's not totally smushy it has some of those white areas some really defined lines so I'm liking it and I'm feeling pretty good about where this is and all that means is that I'm kind of headed in the right direction and that helps me inform what my next steps are going to be but before any next steps I need to clean the plate and you know I don't ever really clean my plate with like a baby wipe I when I refer to cleaning the plate it's the idea of putting out a thin coat of acrylic paint to take off any stray marks that might be there and here you can see I've done that with the green paint looks great another piece of collage paper to be put into my stash so let's take a peek back at what we've done so far um, I think that looking back at your work and analyzing why you like something why you don't like something what works about it what doesn't helps to propel you forward and inform you sort of what the next steps are what you might need to do so I even take a look at some of my cleanup garbage deli papers just to kind of be like what colors do I like you know ask yourself those big questions so here I'm combining a lot of the things that I learned. I know that I need more paint, so I added some gesso into it, which is a little bit heavier than the fluid that I've been using. I know that I like both the positive and the negative. Here you can see the deli paper looks great. Here's a print that has the negative and the positive. You know, I've turned the box a lot of different ways. I am, of course, going to clean off all that yummy texture that has dried onto the plate again. Um, and I'm just reusing, by the way, some of the deli paper that had some empty space and this is really how I get most of the collage paper that I use. So here I'm trying with a new color combination, another theory on how I could make this work. I think um, it's pretty dry, so that's why I decided to add the uh, white gesso on top. And then we're going to pull a giant print. And easily, this is my favorite print. It combines so many of the things that I learned in the process of doing it. And that's always the goal. You take what you learned, you take your mistakes, and now... This is a beautiful piece of paper. It can make a wonderful background for something or wonderful collage paper, all thanks to a little chocolate box. Thanks so much for joining me in the studio. If you would like to take a gelatin printing class from me, I have an epic, amazing gelatin printing class with more than 200 videos. It's literally everything you'd ever want to know about gelatin printing. And there are 13 
book binding projects in the class as well so that you have something to do with your gelatin prints. And I wanna just remind you that gelatin printing is not random, it's not mysterious, it's not who knows what you'll get. You know exactly what you'll get when you understand the paint, the color, the opacity, what you're pressing into the plate. You will always get the results you want completely under control. So for my packaging, I'm saying goodbye and thank you.